Hey everybody, welcome to Fit Tip Tuesday. Today I want to talk to you about the differences between a flat butt and a low butt. These two terms can be confusing because I've heard them used interchangeably when I'm working with some of my pants fitting students. So I thought I would just talk about it for a few minutes so you can maybe identify which shape really speaks to you and what your body is doing. So I drew two quick illustrations here. This is a side view of a flat butt. And what I want you to notice here is the, the biggest thing or the, the most obvious dimension of a flat butt in terms of how you're gonna need to adjust your pattern is really how far it extended, it, it extends backwards, meaning how round it is and how you know, how much room you need inside your pants. Now, let's look at a low, a low butt, and I'm gonna put them side by side here so you can see the differences. A low butt means that the curve of your butt actually is lower than crotch level. Now, let me describe to you what crotch level means to me. Um, crotch level, I'm going to draw on this little illustration here. Crotch level is basically where the inseam stops. And I'm going to draw it about a half an inch below the actual tip of the back crotch because you have a half an inch seam allowance sewn in there. So really it's somewhere right there. Okay, so that's crotch level. So if you have a low butt then the curve is going to need to be below this crotch level line, meaning it's going to dip lower than your crotch point. So now that I've described the basic difference between a flat butt and a low butt, I want to show you what a common crotch curve will look like for each of these. So I'm going to start with the low butt because I have it set up here with my crotch level um, already drawn in. So basically, the adjustment or what you may need to do to accommodate a low butt is to extend the straight part of the center back seam down so you can then curve and come back up like that. Now one of the things that can happen when you do this though is your you want to be careful to not shorten your horizontal space. Now your horizontal space, I'll, I'll draw, draw this one in green, is from here to here basically, where it starts to curve in towards the inseam is approaching parallel to the floor, but you need horizontal space. So notice when I dig this out to accommodate a low butt, I'm also reducing my horizontal space. So I'm going to just draw where my horizontal space starts now. So you can see that I have a little bit less room than I did before. So if you're working with your pattern and it's not a crotch curve that's accommodating a low, a low butt, in addition to scooping it out, you can also extend the crotch out just a little bit to maintain the measurement. Okay, so, and the measurement I'm talking about is from the tip of the crotch to where the curve really is. Extending the crotch point will maintain that measurement. You're not adding to the horizontal space, you're just maintaining it. Okay, so that's, that's what I would do for a low butt. So this adjustment accommodates the position of your butt, not necessarily the shape of it. So if you have a low full hip or a low butt, meaning it's hanging below crotch level, your curve is going to need to be lower than your crotch point. And you can see here I maintained the length of it by extending it a little bit in this orange, orange part here. Um, but what if you have a low butt that's also a full butt? because that is in fact very common, 
doing this is going to give you the length you need but you're also going to need more room in here. So in addition to dropping it, you're going to need to create more horizontal space. And sometimes if your upper thigh measurement is already in agreement, then you can't just keep extending the crotch point out to create more horizontal space because then your leg will be too loose. You'll have too much ease there. So the way you can create more inside room for a low full butt is to actually dig it out this way. Okay, so you can see what we're doing now is we're creating a, a low butt shape, but there's also room if it's full. Okay, and in, in doing that, we're also getting rid of some of the width or some of the fabric that wraps around the outside of your body. So you may have to let out your side seam a little bit. And you want to do that at the same level. So if you're scooping back a little bit to accommodate a low full butt, then right above crotch level, let out your side seam a little bit like this. So that's low butt and a low full butt. Now, if you have a low butt that's also flat, let me show you how you can deal with that. First of all, if you have a flat butt, then you can do a couple things to accommodate that. The first thing you can do is straighten out the center back seam a little bit because you don't need as much of an angle. And if you do that, you may need to trim it off the side over here. And then the other thing you may need to do is trim off some of your crotch extension. Because what that's going to do is reduce your horizontal space because if you have a flat butt, then you don't need as much front to back room. Okay, so those are the two things I would do for a flat butt. Now, if you have a low flat butt, then what I would do is I would continue my straightened center back seam here. Oh, let me draw mine. Let me just get my, um, oops. Let me just get my crotch level here. Okay. So I would extend that so the curve is goes below crotch level and then comes back up okay and this looks a little bit of a frighteningly narrow angle here I'm working with a little half scale pattern so the shape is a little bit condensed you can scoop down lower on a full-size pant leg and come back up to the point without it looking so tight in here okay but my point is if you have a low flat butt, then if you can straighten this out a little bit and then come down and then go back to the original crotch point and don't extend it to maintain the, the horizontal space like I did over here. Okay, so you can remember over here I extended it to maintain the horizontal space. If you have a low flat butt, you don't need to do that. So this would be you know, don't do that, don't do both. So like don't take in the crotch point and scoop low. Just scoop low and that will get rid of the excess fabric that you don't need because your your butt is not, if it's flat, you don't need so much space inside your pants because you won't be able to fill it in. Okay, so this would be a low flat butt and then if you just had a low butt, you would just trim it off here and there and leave the crotch curve alone because being flat does not mean it's low. Okay, so those are the two different um, scenarios that I think can accommodate a lot of different shapes, whether you have just a low butt, a low flat butt, a low full butt, or just a flat butt. So. 
Whew, I talked about a lot of butts today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please post them below and I will help you. I hope you're enjoying Fit Tip Tuesdays. Um, on Friday, I will show you my embroidered new jean pattern I've been working on. Um, I was working on it over the weekend and sadly, after I put it together, it didn't fit because all of the embroidery around the yoke just pulled it in just that little bit that it wouldn't button up on me. So I'm coming up with a plan B, so I'll, sh I'll share that with you on Friday. On Sunday, I'm going to share some troubleshooting tips while embroidering on my brother PRS 100. I think one of the best ways to figure out how to fix things or how to um, discover things that can actually go wrong while you're embroidering is to spend hours and hours and hours doing it. And quite frankly, that's what I've been doing over the past week is spending hours and hours and hours trying to get the embroidery on my yoke um, completed. So I have some really cool tips for you. I'll show you some, or I'll explain some of the snags I, I had along the way and how I fixed them. So if you are into machine embroidery, join me for that on Sunday. And between now and then, I hope everybody has a wonderful, safe, happy Thanksgiving. So thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you again soon.